So I'm just going to give you guys a very, very, very quick outline of what I'm trying to do. Some stuff about AI and some stuff about me. So let's kind of move from the start and build up with basically. Start of my master's in August 2022. We're here in January now. I've got to apply for my PhD, which will hopefully be in the next two or three months. Then after I get a place, I need to make a plan. Like if it's a lot of maths, I need to go and study maths. If it's not, then I can uh, kind of do more videos. So somewhere here, I made my first video with an AI idea, like can chat GPT make an isekai, which was okay. Uh, it did rel well, relatively well. Then I said, can AI make an original book? And I made a book with that. So there. So the character of the book, I called her Shiori. I want to make her into a virtual avatar, you know? But that project was a lot harder than I thought it would be, and it's taking a lot more time. Somewhere around a month ago, I saw the worst duel possible, and I thought, can AI duel better? And ever since then, it's just been escalating from one idea to another idea. Can, can I make AI duel? Can I make AI talk while dueling all these things? And yeah. But also, uh, I need to do my last unit. I need to get like a 75 to get a distinction, so that's going to be tight. So there we go. So... We're going to talk about training set now. So luckily I asked a few YouTubers if they're willing to let me use their stuff. Doto said yes. Cena said yes. Uh, Barry I think is okay. Jay's okay with it within reason. So the idea of a training set is I need loads of examples that I can feed into any AI program. And by giving it more data, it's probably going to learn Doto's voice a lot better. And Doto's voice turned out really well, so we just ran with it. So he's got like 1.7 videos, 1.7, 1700 videos, so we can use those randomly to train, all that stuff. And the training bits get gets very, very important that later down the line. So uh, what I noticed was with a lot of these tools, you can kind of like toggle very, very fine details, move a little bit here, move a little bit there. But I don't really care about getting to 99%. As long as we're like a 60% passable level. So when Dodo sings about rock, it's good. When he raps, it's good. When he sings emotional songs, he can't really do it. I could probably get more range if I spent more time in it. But, you know, I'm kind of a bit pressed for time right now. Okay. So we established a training set now. And then the other thing I kind of want to talk about AI, just to give you a, a brief overview to make things make sense, is curve fitting. So... I've picked an example of the UK, and let's say there are f there are like a, a hundred variables for a house. That size, location, age, how new is the boiler. I'm just going to take three examples. How much square foot you have, uh, where is the nearest station, and the age of the house. So we're going to represent a square foot as X, station as Y, and then age as Z. So a training set is important because that is what tells us how things should work. So I've got a million houses now, which I know the correct answer for. So I know how much every single house sold for in the million. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna just try different numbers. So X, Y, and Z between one and nine, and the function could be a plus, minus, times, divide. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try um, one times 10 plus 12 times 10 plus 3 times 9. Does that give us a correct answer? If, it is, if it's a yes, we have one set of parameters. So what we can then do is try number 2. Do these parameters work for number 2? No. How far off are we? Let's say we're 0.8% and we're 1% percent here. So we know the number can't essentially be... Our best answer right now is 10, 10, 9 plus times. And it gives us a 60% accuracy. That's not really great. To use a better example, let's say you have AX um, can be any function here. BY, any function here. CZ equals 24. Well, you could have 8 plus 8 plus 8. You can have 8 plus 7 plus 9. You can have 2 times 3 times 4. What I'm trying to impress upon you is of the million, there are like, I think, 8,000 combinations I think I can make here to get 24. But because some combinations are correct and some are wrong, that's going to get narrowed down to our best fit. So let's say our final function is um, uh, 
A equals 7, B equals 2, and C equals 3. These are our parameters, and our functions are going to be a plus and a minus. It's tried every single possibility in, this, um, in the million houses, and this is the best fit. What we can also do is we can try 50,000 houses, okay, and then we can leave 50,000 houses empty. We can then see how accurate was this function here, in there. Oh, yeah, in here. Okay, let's move on now. So we can say, you know what, here is my global universal function for the UK. If you give me any house with any square foot of the house, any size of the house, any age of the house, I will tell you its price. Now, you might be saying, okay, but the UK is really complex. The house, the house price in London is different to the house price in Scotland. That's true. So the function in Scotland might look like this, and the function in London might look like this. Now we're going to move on to how this AI kind of breaks down. So what I need to do is I want to take the guys who said yes, let's just say Berry, yes, let's say Cena, yep, let's say Dota. I want to train an AI or some AI program on their stuff. So this training set here and this training set here is what I'm using as a template to train. That's why I chose these guys and they said yes because they're big enough because they've got such a big sample size, which means the more I have, the better it's probably going to be. But I'm not trying to copy their stuff. They're just a template. So I'll take all these guys and hopefully I can make an AI person. So uh, you've got Vidal San here. In in creating Berry to to uh, Vidal, I'm gonna learn some like um, some issues that I couldn't foresee and go from there. Once I have a working version, I can just get rid of these training sets now, and then create free original characters. Okay, and then hopefully you guys have seen Rhyme before because if you're watching my channel with Yu-Gi-Oh and Dota, you've probably seen Rhyme. We're gonna talk again about the training set. The reason AIs struggled with hands in the beginning was because you were trained on a set of like anything. Like you got some humans, some cities, some animals, all this stuff. Whereas let's say 200 animals, 10 hum 100 humans, 20 cities. So you've got 20% are good. And of that 20%, maybe 5% of that is okay. So no wonder you had a bad hand. Whereas if you just train 500 pictures of hands, the AI is gonna be pretty good at making hands, pretty simple. So, um, with Vidal San, uh, just happy there. With um, the large language model, if I just take a generic chat GPT answer, I'm going to get boring stock answers. There's going to be no communication. If, for example, we train on Rhymes data, which I'm not going to do because he he's not that cool of it. When he plays Dust Tornado, he often says, your window's open, your window's open, your window's open. If I trained the model on Dodo, it will never come up with the idea, your window's open with Dust Tornado. If you train on Rhyme, the association might be created. So the large language model might say, hey, when I'm playing Dust Tornado, your window's open. Okay, and now <laughs> Vidal San itself, it's, I'm not gonna say it's easy to make, but I think in a, in a thousand hours, I could probably do it, and before that. The problem is, um, I can use a large language model. Uh, I need to, I can probably make a game play itself, certain game. And I could probably have live reaction as well. Like each single thing will take me like tens to hundreds of hours to do. And I need to get every single thing working to a certain level, you know? And that's just gonna take a lot of time. Even though there's a lot of good stuff out there, I don't have that much time for the above mentioned reason that uh, I've got to apply for a PhD and prepare for an interview which isn't easy and takes a lot of time to do. Okay, and then the last few areas are, when I was watching um, Sam play Yu-Gi-Oh, he spent four and a half minutes on one turn, Jesus Christ, he played so many cards. So the optionality of Yu-Gi-Oh, let's just say one to a, a bajillion. Oh my God, so many, but you move up very, very, very quickly, which is a lot of things to compute. Whereas Pokemon, it's basically just rock, paper, scissors, just slightly more intelligent. There's more options there. So what I might do is I might, if I had the time, see if I can get AI Dodo 
to play Yu-Gi-Oh and to play Pokemon and if AI Dota can play Pokemon and react to Pokemon in a lifetime I might then work on creating AI Shiori and go there that's kind of the gist of what I'm thinking of doing and then uh, last bit now I'll say again also making AI Dota sing about femboys it's just funny you know uh, and I won't hear anyone else say I'm wrong so now is January September when I should hopefully start a PhD between now and then I kind of want to put some stuff on my YouTube channel but the, the balance is how hard do I do versus how easy do I do so I think I could do a few Nuzlocks easily some master level content easily and then after I've got a big catalogue I can do more AI stuff sprinkled in um, but in the meantime we'll have AI here AI here and we'll have uh, master duel master duel master duel master duel I've kind of had to balance it now so what can I do what is good for university and planning for my preparation like if I do a deep learning project on the voices that might be useful to talk about in an interview um, what do I think will do some good views and what's fun Anything in the sweet spot is probably where to go. And after September, hopefully I've got a catalogue of like 100 things which are fairly okay. I can then start working on some like Code Bullet more style things. But the thing about Code Bullet's videos are, they take a lot of time. Like a lot of time. So yeah, I've got to go back to uh, reading my uh, AI book now, which is going to be fun. But hopefully this makes sense of what I'm doing. And everyone whose stuff I've used, I've went and asked permission for. So that's roughly what I'm trying to do, you know. So yeah, any questions, maybe I'll try and answer them. I'll make a technical video, but that's the uh, gist of it. So hopefully you see some more AI content soon.